So it's fair to say 2021 was a fairly disappointing year from a Cork point of view. Well, not fairly, it was a disappointing year from a Cork point of view. They were absolutely demolished in that Munster Senior Football Championship final by Kerry. They didn't even stand the chance really after the first quarter. Having started the game so well actually quite early on and Brian Hurley gets that goal, you were thinking Cork might maybe turn Kerry over, but that wasn't the case. Kerry absolutely demolished Cork. It, was not, it wasn't even a contest really. It was over after about 20 to 25 minutes. But from a Cork point of view in general, it was a disappointing year for the Cork footballers. They just about staved off relegation to Division 3, beating Westmead. And then, yes, they came through the Munster Championship, beating Limerick in the semi-finals. But a very disappointing game against Kerry. Ronan McCarthy has stepped away. In comes Keith Ricken. And there's a bit of optimism and excitement about Cork football going into 2022. I was delighted to speak with Matthew Hurley from the GA Statsman for today's season preview, where we look in-depth all things Cork ahead of the 2022 National Football League and the 2022 All-Ireland Senior Football Championship. We spoke about a number of topics, including some players maybe to come in, what kind of style will Keith Ricken play as manager, the under-20 success in recent seasons. We also touched on the All-Ireland Club semi-finals as well. Can St Finbar's win the All-Ireland Club Senior Football Championship? And how exactly did they manage to pull off that win against Austin Stacks and much more? So if you do enjoy the content and do enjoy the season previews i would appreciate a like a comment and subscribe if you could if you could share this out to your friends and family it helps the channel grow it helps the podcast grow as well and if you're listening on spotify or apple Podcasts, if you could give the podcast a rating it really does help as well um, and helps um, the podcast get more noticed to uh, more people so yeah without further ado the cork football season preview the cork hurling season preview will be out next week so stay tuned for that but a cork football season preview let's get into it Before we get straight into the podcast, I just want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors, D Kirby GA Star. Declan Kirby GA Star Championship Journey. It's a series of GA team children's books written by primary school teacher and GA coach Michael Egan. You can check it out in the link in the description down below, of course, as well. Follow the trials and tribulations of Declan Kirby and his team at Smith Green Gaelic Football Club, recently formed a promising GA team. The book is now available in Easons and all good bookshops, so check it out in the description down below. And let's get straight into into it okay so i'm here now with matthew hurley from the ga statsman podcast to preview the cork footballers and the hurlers ahead of the 2022 ga season which uh is just what a week away now a week and a half away so i suppose how's things matthew anyways you're all set for another inter-county season anyways following the the cork footballers and hurlers yeah thanks for having me on aaron again yeah it's going to be another roller coaster ride with both teams like uh, the hurlers know it's a 17 year famine without all ireland Never thought we'd say that after 2005. And for the footballers, it's a new era. Keep Ricking in charge now. And I think there's a lot of excitement around the car footballers. There hasn't been in previous years with other managers, but with this guy now with the helm, I think we're going to see some exciting football. And that's what the car folk is all about, really. And I suppose we are realistic. We're going to lose to Kerry, to be honest, in Munster. But what we want to see really is car teams playing at the front foot to do well in Division 2 and maybe build a run up in the qualifiers and that's all we want just to be competitive again because I don't think we've been competitive in years since about 2013, 2014 when we got knocked out to Mayo in Dublin. But for the Hurlers, look, there's an argument there could be the second best team in the country but I think, look at our Munster Hurling group in the Championship anyway, we could be in for a tough year like with Tipperary away, Watford away, they'll be tough games. Limbrick at home, you don't want to be playing Limbrick at home. Like, I suppose they're kind of the worst team you'd want to welcome to Parky Creeve. They're just an animal of a team. But I suppose it's going to be an interesting year for both hurlers and footballers. I'm really looking forward to it. Definitely, yeah. And we'll, we'll definitely touch on the, the hurlers a little bit later. And um, I'll probably separate the previews for the hurlers and the footballers anyway so I suppose for anyone who's watching the football preview at the minute stay tuned for the, the hurling preview that'll probably be out next week at some stage but looking at the footballers first of all like um, what's the the general feeling and the general mood like for the Cork footballers going into 2022? Look it, it's optimism it is real optimism when you think about the last four years we have Rhoda McCarthy and I think there was a bit of discontent in the camp the younger players weren't given a goal but even we see in the McGrath Cup in the last two games, I know they're against Clare and Watford, you can't really judge, and it's pre-season as well. 
But still, there's a lot of new blood coming into the team now. Mark Cronin's getting a run at the team, for example, and he was a main player under Keith Ricken. You look at Rory Maguire from Castlehaven, he's a real star coming into the team. And you have Chris Oak Jones, John Cooper. So I think there's a, going to be a lot of change with this Cork football team. There's going to be a lot of new faces coming in. A lot of the older players are now leaving. Like I'd say the only older players we'll expect to see. Brian Hurley, of course, is in the form of his life, really, in his career. Ian McGuire, once the Bars finish their club campaign, of course, it's a mystery when they'll return. And I suppose Michal Martin, if you count him as an experienced player, Sean Powder, but having said that, Sean Powder's 23 years of age, which is hard to believe. But yeah, I think we'll see a lot of new faces in this Cork team. And it will take a while for Keith to stamp his authority on the team. But I'm excited for the future. I'm really excited. And I suppose the future really starts um, tomorrow's we're recording this. We're playing Kerry in the McGrath Cup. We'll see how they perform in that game there. And see how the new faces perform. And then in the league, the league is going to be crucial this year to see how we perform against top opposition to an extent, the likes of Galway, Ross Common. And to an extent as well, awfully down, Clare, they're going to be no pushovers either, Mead. So it's going to be a very tough division and it's crucial we stay in Division 2. Never mind get up to Division 1. It's not going to be the end of the world if we don't get up. But if we go down, we'll be in the Talton Cup if we lose to carry the Munster Championship, which, let's be honest, it will happen. So it's it's vitally important we stay in Division 2 and avoid the Talton Cup. But having said all that, I'm excited for the future and it will take time to build. So the car fans just need to be patient with this guy, Keith Ricken, and he will deliver the next few years. How would you reflect on on last year's league and, and championship then? Because, like, obviously very disappointing in, in that Kerry game. Like, and I remember watching it. And I remember, like, in the first quarter, I thought Cork were performing really well. You got that early goal, and it was looking like maybe, you know, we were going to see 2020 all over again, and maybe Cork were going to pull off the shock. But I suppose the longer the game went on, we've seen Kerry just absolutely demolish Cork in, in more ways than one. So how would you look back on, on last year, and I suppose in particular that Kerry defeat? I suppose the most disappointing aspect was we didn't put up much of a fight after the first quarter. I think, yes, Kerry, they're unbelievable attacking wise. If you give Sean, but the thing is, if you give Sean O'Shea, David, well, in fairness, David Clifford was marked out of the game by Sean Meehan, who should be credited. He got a nomination for the All Stars, which is credit to him because that was an absolutely brilliant performance by him. But we can't keep relying on certain players to do it. There was the likes of Brian Hurley, did well in the first quarter. Sean Meehan did well in. Clifford, Michal Martin saved us so many times in the first half with a few brilliant saves, but they were just individual performances. And as a collective, we were all over the place, literally all over the place, especially in the second half. And the worrying thing was defensive errors. We just, I know Kerry are a brilliant side and all, but we made it way too easy for them. Look at the first goal, for example. You're taught at about six, seven, eight years of age, go to the danger. Not one car player went to the danger. They minded their player. Brian O'Brokely just went through straight on goal. Brilliant finish in fairness to him, but we should have done a lot more to close him down. The second goal then, it was a six forwards for Kerry on four defenders from Cork. And if you do that against teams like Kerry, they're just going to whitewash you and you know, that's what happens if you aren't prepared for later on in the game. Yes, it's okay doing well in the first quarter, but the rest of the game was just really hard to watch because ultimately, I don't think we put up much of a fight compared to the likes of Monaghan against Tyrone, Kildare against Dublin, even though they were defensive, and Galway against Mayo. We just laid down, and that was a bit disappointing, in all honesty. And I hope Keith Rickett will rectify it. I think he will for this year because... I think with Ronan, he didn't really improve us over the last few years. And, you know, it was it was always going to come to an end sooner rather than later. And look, Keith's come in now. I hope that things will improve this year. Yeah, because I suppose there was a lot of inconsistency really with, with Cork last year and in the past couple of years. Like anytime under Ronan McCarthy, really like a, go- a great result seemed to be followed by a bit of a shock result. Like you think back beating Kerry in 2020 and then losing to, to Tip in the final and even, you know, a few years previously as well, you'd have some great performance followed by, I suppose, some mediocre performances. So it did seem to be like when the Ronald McCarthy was that, it was finding that real consistency really. And there did seem to be a lot of players at different times who would maybe show up one week and not show up the next. So I'd imagine that's the big thing for, for Keith Rick and now is just finding that consistency in the Cork team because they definitely do have the talent and they definitely do have a lot of great players. And 
good players coming through. It's just about, I suppose, putting a string of results together and building from there. Yeah, it absolutely is. And what he relied as well is a bit of common sense. What Cork um, excel on really is playing 15 on 15 attacking football. With Ronan, I think he overthinked us over, over the last few years. Like, when you think to the start of 2019, we were struggling in the league. We lost to Clare, Mead, all these teams, Kildare, and we were playing defensive football sweeper systems. And then suddenly, against the likes of Donegal, Armagh, when it was too little too late, let's be honest, and we got relegated anyway. But we started playing on the front foot. We started playing attacking football. We did it against Kerry in the Munster final, which I thought was actually a better performance than 2020 when we actually beat Kerry. And we lost them by three points. Then in the Super 8s against Dublin, we were superb in Crow Park. Superb again against Tyrone. We played as well as we could, but Tyrone themselves were playing a blanket defence system. But I just want us to go back to 2019. We were playing on the front foot. We were playing man on man and show what a good football county we are. Because the players are there, as we see, obviously, the 2019 or the 20 championship. We have Mark Cronin, Cahal O'Mahony. Blake Murphy's a real guy to watch out for this year. He's done well in the McGrath Cup. And he's really come into this year. He only played one game last year, which was very strange indeed. He's such a talented individual player. You also have Brian Hartnett, Daniel O'Connell coming into the team. So I'm really excited about these young players coming in and just just for Keith to play an attacking style of football because you see once he played the ex- this attacking style of football in the other 20 championship the fans got behind him I never see the Cork football folk get behind the team going into half time against Dublin I think we were way behind going uh, going into the first 10 minutes of the game but then it, once it got to half time we were just a few points ahead and there was a low cheer from the Cork fans as the Cork players entered the dressing room and that gave the players the belief so I think what the players do out the pitch will translate into the stands. The fans will get behind this team if we start playing attacking football. But if we start playing defensive football and hence we don't know what we're doing, I don't think the fans will get behind us. So I think that's crucial as well. And I think Keith will add this. I'm really confident he will. I hope he will. Yeah, well, like I suppose, because I remember seeing that under-20 final against Dublin as well. And I thought Cork were, were very impressive. And they've definitely brought through a, a fair amount of attacking players like or a fair amount of attacking players I suppose in their disposal as well they probably haven't played for the Cork seniors yet but like what you said there before like I remember Cork against Dublin in, in the Super 8s there 2019 I think it was and yeah like I thought that was a brilliant performance that day from Cork I remember being really surprised watching the game because I think it was only a two or three point game going into the final I think 10 minutes or so. And I know Dublin pulled away and, and won the game quite, quite comfortable in the end. Like they got a couple of goals late on and probably made the game look more comfortable than it was. But like, you definitely do have the players there like all across the board in terms of, you know, your, your Brian Hurley's maybe Stephen Sherlock to come back in and young players like Blake Murphy, Mark Rowland, and then a very balanced midfield of Ian McGuire, Brian Hayes. So like, you've got, you've got the talent there to play on the front foot. So, I'd imagine like that. That surely should be the way Keith Ricken will go in in uh, in 2022 because that I suppose that's the way he's kind of gone for the majority of the time. You know, from what I've seen when he's been uh, managing, I suppose underage teams. And that's exactly it. He will go for the kid. Really, he'll go for the jogger. He doesn't care what other people think. He'll just play football so fans will enjoy it. Not to try and win the game. Like when we tried to play defensive football with sweeper systems and all that, I think. The only good result we got out of it was against Kerry. And to be honest, Kerry kind of shot themselves in the foot by putting Brian O'Beogley at wing forward at the start of the game. And that made the car players believe. So the evidence is there. We have to play on the front foot. We have to play front foot football. And ultimately, the fans will definitely enjoy it. And you look at the young players coming in. I'm hopeful Brian Hayes will pick football, of course, when the bars finish. He's picked Sigurdsson over Fitzgibbon in the college competition. So maybe that's an indicator that he will pick football, which is great. Absolutely brilliant. Jack Callan is another one who actually was on the bench for the game against Waterford in the McGrath Cup. It looks like he'll be going to football, which I found surprising because Damien plays hurling. But anyway, so maybe it's a sign that the players that are going to deliberate between hurling and football believe in this manager. And that's a very good sign indeed for... Cork football going forward and the the contract is for two years I hope it's going to be longer I think it will be longer if Keith adds instant success I don't think it will be this year because I still think 
there's a few gaps in the team, and especially for the start of the league, we'll miss a lot of the Bars players, especially Hayes, Maguire, Sherlock, and Billy Hennessy was excellent for the Bars. I think he could add something as well once they come back. And we have still have a lot of injuries. Nemo Donovan's out injured, Killian O'Hanlon, Brian Hartnett got injured in the Sigerson during the week, playing against UCD. He pulled the hamstring. So they'll be huge losses. But um, that's what a squad is for as well. And I don't know, would this be a biased opinion, really? But I think Cork are up there in Division 2 with probably the best squad of players. I'm not sure are we up there with the starting 15. But that just shows the size of the county as well. There'll be some brilliant players coming through. I think Galway would be a challenger for stronger squad as well with us. But we really have strong players in nearly every position. And as showed in the club championship, there was quality all over the pitch. And people were saying it was poor quality, but St. Finbar's beat Austin Sachs from Kerry. So the proof is in the pudding there. The Cork Football Championship was pretty good. It was entertaining. And the underrated success with Keith Ricken coming in as well. I think things are going on the up gradually, but of course we can't get ahead of ourselves yet. We have to prove ourselves as senior. Put up a good performance to carry the Monster semi-finals and compete well in Division 2. Not necessarily get promoted straight away, but finish your own third or fourth, in my opinion. Not to go down, because I think our start to the league is going to be very tough without the Bars players. And then the end of the league, I think, will gain momentum and eventually get us out of trouble. But look, I just want us to play front foot football for young players to come through, which hasn't been to prominence over the last few years and to show what a good football county car could be. I think we can be up there with all Ireland's in the next few years if we get it right. And with this manager at the helm now and with his backroom team, John Cleary there, Michal O'Crony, James Lockery, I think we can. I think we could be a trace in the next few years. But of course, this year is only baby steps, really. Yeah, and just to play devil's advocate for a minute, like, do you think maybe there's a worry there that maybe Keith Ricken doesn't have the experience at this level, like at senior inter-county management level, and, and maybe that might be a, a slight hindrance? Because I know he, he won a Sigerson Cup, and he's obviously won an under-20 All-Ireland, so he, he's plenty of experience in coaching and managing, but I suppose at this level, where the pressure is on, where you're going to be under scrutiny, and you know people are going to be watching, and you know there's going to be write-ups and papers about games and then I suppose pressure on if, if Cork get off to maybe a poor start because there is tier two coming in as well so do you think maybe that might be something he'll, he'll I suppose have to get used to dealing with I think he's kind of dead to it already he just deals with the media as a normal person would really like you see his interview on TG Carter he just you know provides the simple things in games and I suppose he doesn't take much attention to what analysts have to say about Cork. Like, a prime example, the analysts were talking about their under-20 success against Dublin and they were talking about systems and all that. And Keith didn't know what the hell they were talking about. That, that just shows you he doesn't really buy into that type of stuff. He just wants his teams to play football on the front foot. And, you know, he doesn't t- pay much attention, which that's why I like in a manager. He doesn't care what other people think. And I suppose his interviews and all that really show that. And I suppose there's there's no pressure on Cork this year. Like, even look at the Division Two um, teams around them. There's pressure maybe on Galway because they'll be big favourites to go up to Division One. Ross Cobble didn't win a game in uh, um, 2021. And there'll be huge pressure on Anthony Cunningham to try and deliver, to say to the people that Stephen Porter was the problem or something like that. So I think there'll be pressure on other teams, Mead as well, who had the problems behind the scenes with Andy McEntee. There'll be pressure on them players to prove that they believe in this coach as well. So I think out of all the Division 2 teams, I think Cork, Clare, Offaly, Down, I think them four teams, there's hardly no pressure really on them. Maybe Derry as well, but I suppose there'll be a lot of people talking about Derry, but they do have the talents, having said that, but... I don't think there's much pressure on this Cork team to deliver because most people will say, you don't know what to expect from Cork. They'll probably be at the bottom half. They won't challenge for promotion. They have a new manager in from under 20. And honestly, some people are saying he won't have a clue. But I think Keith Keith will, will take to that pretty well. He's done so in previous years. I don't think there's much pressure on this Cork team compared to other teams in Division 2. So... I honestly don't think there's much pressure on the Carthy compared to the likes of Ross Common, Galway, Meath, in my opinion, anyway. 
Yeah, and, and what kind of under-20 footballers could you see maybe come into the team then? Because I suppose there's been hype around players like Mark Cronin and Blake Murphy, and for whatever reason, over the past couple of years, they haven't really been involved too much. And I know Cahal O'Mahony suffered a big injury at the end of last year. Maybe he might come back in this year. So, like, you do have plenty of, uh, of footballers to come in there, but is there any players maybe coming into the panel that you're most excited for? If he comes in, of course, if he chooses football over Hurley, Brian Hayes, I think he could be the difference in our midfield. I've seen him for the bar so many times. I've seen him in under 20. He's just a superb talent. He's so athletic. He drives up the field. He wins balls in the air. He's a superb talent. Unbelievable player. Mark Cronin as well. What you notice about Mark Cronin in the McGrath Cup, he tracks back as well. He doesn't just stay up forward. He does the donkey work in the middle of the field as well, if need be. And that's why we need just hard raft- grafters. And of course, Blake Murphy. We know this guy has the talent. And I think he just needs the manager to guide him in that way. And Keith Rickon happens to be from the same club as Blake. So that'll be a huge boost for him. You look at other players as well. Roy Maguire's come in, a Castlehaven defender. He's done well in the McGrath Cup. And there's there's other talents as well. Daniel O'Mahony at fullback. Sean Meehan from the under-20 team in 2019. Obviously has blossomed into a star player for us. And there's still some young players like Potter would be an experienced player. He's 23 years of age, which is kind of hard to believe. Daniel O'Connell and Brian Hartnett are midfield partnership in the under-20. Brian Hartnett obviously played last year. Daniel O'Connell got a goal in the Bogart Cup against Clare. So, yeah, I do think, I genuinely believe we do have the talent coming through and in the club championships as well. Another interesting one, not necessarily for under-20s, but this guy, he comes from Listowel in County Kerry. Joe Grimes. He, he plays midfield for Cork. He's been playing for Clonakilty for years now, and he's coming into our midfield. It'd be interesting to see how he develops. He'll be playing against Kerry in the McGrath Cup as well. So I think we do have a lot of players in every position to prove themselves. I suppose cornerbacks as well. Paul Rings, another guy I've, I'm hearing, he's at the gym usually now, which he needs. He needs to build up a bit of strength there. So we do have the players. It's the question of, can these players deliver at senior level? And, I'd be confident they can over the, if not this year, maybe the next few years, because there's phenomenal players there, no question about it. Yeah, and you mentioned Division 2 there. Like, I think for myself personally, nearly as a neutral, like, I think Division 2 is going to be really fascinating because you've got a lot of very good teams in there and you've got a lot of pressure on managers. And there's really a lot on the line because it really is going to spill into the championship with the fact that you've Tier 2 obviously coming in and the two teams who get relegated from Division 2, if they don't reach a provincial final, well, then. Uh, they, they'll go into the Talchian Cup and won't go into the qualifiers. So like a lot of expectation on a lot of counties there. You're even looking at, you know, Galway, Cork, who've uh, Cork obviously play Kerry first up in Munster, Galway play Mayo. Like if any of those two sides were to go on bad runs or, or find themselves in trouble, like they could end up in the Talchian Cup. So like looking at Division 2, it's going to be very, very fascinating to see uh, how it all pans out there. Definitely is, yeah. And I mentioned Cork have a tough start. They have to play Ross Common in Hyde Park. I'd be worried about that Ross Common game. I know Ross Common lost every game last year, but they are a good side. I've seen them in the FBD League final against Galway. They look a very good side. And going back to the midfield issue, we have four midfielders out, Kitty O'Hanlon, Brian Hartness, Brian Hayes, Annie McGuire. That's four huge losses, obviously. And Ross Common still have Enda Smith there, who's still a phenomenal player. So I think that'll be a worry for Cork going up to Ross Common. Then we have Clare at home. I think it's a time now where we have to stop losing to the likes of Tipperary, Limerick and Clare. I, I'm honestly sick of it as a Cork fan, in all honesty. And I think the tide is turning a small bit like against Clare. We beat them in the league last year. It kind of felt like a defeat. We kind of forgot about that. But still, we beat them in the McGrath Cup. And St. Finbar's beat Arrow Guinness quite comfortably in the Munster Championship without Brian Hayes and Colin Barrett at the team. So... That will give us a bit of confidence that we can be clear. We won't take them lightly anymore. We'll take them much more seriously. So I think we'll be confident enough to be clear. But after that, then, we have to go to Owen Bay to play Derry. Now, Derry are one of the most informed teams in the division. And, yeah, it's it's going to be a very tough game. Yes, last time we went up to Derry, we actually won, coincidentally, in Division 2. But this Derry team is a different beast. It's a superb side. It's superbly trained. Rory Gallagher is a superb coach. Their midfield as well. I'll go back to the midfield issue we have. Dave Connor Glass, Emmett Bradley in midfield. And Anton Tohill, Anthony Tohill's son coming in as well. So that'll be tough. Then we've got away the next two games after that. 
But then a bit of positivity in the last two games, we're down and awfully. You know, they'd be probably by relegation candidates. We'll get wins there once we have the Bars players back, which I think I think they lose to Kilku, so we'll have them back pretty pretty quick, maybe in March or sometime. So that'll be a good time to get them back. But obviously there is the hope there we could get to a Division Two final. We'd love to get up there to Crow Park to you know be part of the party atmosphere for the league finals. But be realistic. I think my prediction for Cork, I think we'll finish about fourth or fifth. In Division 2, which won't be bad. I think we won't get relegated to the Talton Cup, but I suppose it's crucial we be clear in Parky Keeve to achieve that. And if we do that, then I think we could aim for about fourth or fifth in the division. But we'll have to wait and see. We'll see how these players... And there's a lot of players that have to put their hands up as well, like the Bars lads are missing, there's some injuries. So there's spaces in the team for players to put their hands up. If they perform well and win somehow win against the likes of Ross Common and Derry, then it'll be a tough for Keith Rickett, tough in a good way, because there'll be players putting their hands up for the championship game against Kerry. And that's always great to see out of a so-called underdog. So I would say fourth or fifth for Cork. It'll be really the game, but obviously we'd love to be up there for league finals weekend. It'll be a dream, really. Yeah, I've Cork in, in fifth. And like, interesting enough, I was looking at the fixtures there as well. Like it's, I suppose it could go one way or the other. Like you could start fast and, and get, big wins maybe against Roscommon or Galway and find yourself in the, in the promotion race but they're probably like it is a, a tough start like you've got Mead, Galway, Roscommon, Derry like I think they'll all be in the front four um, and you know so it, it's probably like it is a, a very tough start to have and, and you're opening five games and it probably does put more pressure on the, on the Clare game as well but like overall who, who would you see then to be promoted and, and potentially relegated then in Division 2? This is a bit of a call in Division 2 but I think Derry will win it I think they have the ingredients for a very good side there. I mentioned them at Bradley, Connor Glass, Anton Tohul, Shane McGuigan, Chrissy McKeag, and of course the tactical genius that is Rory Gallagher. They have some very good players and they'll be going into this year with a lot of optimism. Like against Dudley Gall, let's not forget, if they had the confidence to shoot in the last few minutes, they could have even beat Dudley Gall in that Ulster Championship game. So I think Derry, the story is the limit for them. I think they'll top Division 2. Second, I think it's between the two Connacht sides, Ross Common and Galway. I would think it'll be Ross Common. I, I just think that Keith O'Neill is coming in at Galway. I don't think he did much with Cork. It'll be interesting, no doubt about that, but I don't think he'll develop Galway as a team. Ross Common, I think Stephen, Stephen Porter's now gone. They'll be back to their attacking, and they're kind of in that dilemma, kind of like Cork, whether to play a defensive system or an attacking system. Once they play the attacking system, they have the players to do it, like Connor Cox in the Smith. And once they have the Padre Pierce's players back as well, like Carey, their number 15, looked a very good player. And I'd be excited to see him in the Ross Common shirt later in the year. But yeah, I would say it'd be between Ross Common and Godwin. Ross Common could do it for relegation down anyway. Like they went after four managers. I think Pete McGrath would have been one. Then they went after Marty Clark, Jim McGuinness, and, G- and um, Connor Laverty. None of them wanted the job they had to settle for James McCartan like I'd love to go back to 2010 no doubt about it but look it's it's not 2010 anymore 12 years have passed James McCartan look and I'm sure he didn't do well at underage either so it's it's not really a um, a very good appointment and then for the second unfortunately for Offaly I think Offaly I think they'll do well I think they'll challenge sides in Division 2 I think they do have the players to do it, like Cormac Egan, Jack Bryant. But they have Keen Johnson's though recovering from injury. So is Keen Farrell. They're two huge losses. They're relying a lot on Noy Matt in the main games in the O'Born Cup. I know it's pre-season, but still it's kind of a good indicator of where teams should be at the start of the league. So I'd probably have Ross Common. Clare would be close as well. I don't know. It's interesting with Clare because I don't know when the bubble burst. Like Joe Bagan, I'm hearing, is going out of the panel. Uh, obviously Gary Brennan left the panel but Colin Collins the main cog the manager is still there that's a key for them and they still have young players coming through like Emmett McMahon and Sigurdsson has been unbelievable so I suppose they still have good players but it's a question whether the bubble will burst but I would say awfully and down to go down and I think Ross Common and Derry will get promoted yeah, I suppose it is an interesting one, like you said there with Claire as well. Like they're one of them teams that seem to surprise you year in and year out and, and pull off shocks and, and surprises. But it is also one of them things as well where you would wonder will that, I suppose, momentum that they've had over the past 
maybe five to ten years in the National Football League finally run out. But looking at Cork then in, in the Munster Senior Football Championship, you've you've Kerry first up in, in Munster. I mean, the first the last time you had Kerry up first in, in Munster, you beat them uh, two years ago. So huge game against Kerry and at least you will have qualifiers in there and we'll know by then the, the outcome of Division 2 in terms of what you're, you know, if you were to be relegated, you'll know obviously the importance of, of that game with Tolchian Cup coming up but getting Kerry first up uh, in the Munster Championship, is that the, the perfect time to play them? You know what history actually um, suggests it would be? The last two times we played Kerry in the semi-final of the Munster Championship, we won both times. 2020 obviously recently and 2012, I suppose, for God's sake, that was 10 years ago. But still, it kind of is a good time to play Kerry to see what they really like. But as I said, Division 2 will be absolutely crucial. Because realistically, I think this year, if I'm being a realist, we're going to lose to Kerry. Simple as that. So we, it's vitally important we avoid the, uh, relegation to Division 3. Because if we get relegated to Division 3 and we go into the Talton Cup, that'll be a bad start to the project. And that'll just put us on the back foot. We keep ricking already. And the, that's the last thing we want with this manager. But of course, if we finish mid-table in Division 2, go into the qualifiers, I think we could reach the quarterfinals if we get a good run of results coming together. Like, I think there's only a select few teams we'd be really, really scared of. I'd say Kerry, Dublin still, Tyrone, and Mayo, I would say, them four teams. But the rest of them, look, if Carr come up against them, I think we could challenge them. There is an argument, yes, Armagh, Donegal, Monaghan, Kildare have better 15 possibly than us. But I think we have better players to come on, if you know what I mean, because we have the under-20 talent coming through and we still have a lot of options if they're all fit, of course. That's a crucial thing as well. We have to keep nearly all of our players fit for us to get a good run in the all earners here. But it is crucial for us to stay in Division 2. You know what? If we stay up with Division 2, there's no pressure on us against Kerry. No one's expecting anything of us and we can have a good crack off them. And I know we're going to lose. It's as simple as that. We're going to lose to Kerry. But the last time Jack O'Connor faced against Keith Ricken, Keith Ricken beat him by 11 points. I know it was under 20, but still, it's a good omen to have. And maybe there'll be pressure on Jack O'Connor to deliver against Keith Ricken. Like he'll know at the back of his mind he's never beaten Keith Ricken as a manager. He might have won all Ireland in 2009 and 04 or whatnot, but he's never beaten this manager. And maybe that'll be on the back of Jacko's mind. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But crucially, we have to stay up in Division 2 to go into the Kerry game with no pressure on our shoulders. Yeah, I suppose a good omen. But at the same time, it could also spur Jack O'Connor on. At the same time, you know, he probably won't take Keith Ricken for, for granted and he'll probably approach that game maybe thinking, look, we need I need to put this one right personally. But I suppose from a Cork point of view as well, like you mentioned qualifiers there as well and, and having the qualifiers return, I suppose, it, hopefully anyways, it's looking like at the moment anyway, there definitely will be qualifiers. I mean, we haven't heard otherwise and there's no real reason to suggest that they're going to cancel them again this year. But for teams like Cork and, and maybe Derry and some other counties, like it, it is huge to have qualifiers in there because uh, especially for a team like Cork, like they could really use the qualifiers really well. And we've seen them do it in the past and especially maybe bringing teams back to, to Parky Cueve and going on the road as well and having a bit of momentum maybe from Division 2. Like it could be a great time for, for Cork to, to give more players game time. And as you said, potentially a lot of tough teams maybe to come out of other provinces. But at the same time, I think with he's been in a semi-final of the of the Munster Championship, I think it is, you'd probably play what two, three qualifier games. So I suppose it's not improbable that you don't reach that quarterfinals. It's not really, no, not at all. And even I go back to the argument. So I think or the four teams would really, really fear are probably the big four already in Toronto, Mayo, Dublin, Kerry. But then the rest, I think realistically, Carr could give him a good old run. Like when you look over recent years, like we kind of um Said before the leash game in 2019, this could be a banana skin for us. It would have been over the years, but we played front foot football, which we will under this manager, hopefully. And we absolutely blitz leash from the first minute to the last. So, you know, I, I think I think we'll have we'll we'll have the momentum really if we get good form for division two. And of course, the bars, if they get a good run the club championship, I don't think they will. I think Kilku will eventually win that. But even beating Austin Stacks, that'll give Cork football the lift they need and give giving the some of them bars players a chance like Billy Hennessy coming into the team, Stephen Sherlock, of course, 
and they'll add an extra zest to the car team, extra depth, which we need in in a qualifier run, which I don't think the likes of Monaghan or Armagh, they have very good starting 15s, don't get me wrong, but let's just say Monaghan get an injury to Conor McManus or Armagh get an injury to Reen O'Neill. Who's there to come in? That's that's probably the question that needs to be asked. When you look at Cork, for example, who if Brian Hurley gets injured with Mark Cronin, if Mark Cronin gets injured, Carl O'Mahony, Carl O'Mahony, possibly Luke Connolly can come back into the fold again. Dan Deneen, another one who scored four points in the McGrath Cup in a uh, game previously. So, look, we have the numbers to make a good run of it in the qualifiers. And if we get a good draw, if we get a good draw, if we get to the quarterfinals, who knows? We could be the team if we play open, expansive football in Crow Park. And who knows? A semi final would be absolutely brilliant for this team to develop in the next few years. And I think, honestly, realistically, that's as far as we'll go semi or quarterfinals. But even to get there, to be up there with the main counties, that's the main thing for Cork because the last time we were up there on a consistent basis, I would say, was 2013, really, against Dublin, where we gave them a good game. We only lost by five points. And this was the Dublin team that started the Jim Gavin era the year before we reached the all the semi-finals against Donegal and lost it eventually. But at the same time, like that was an opportunity that we'll never get back again. We, sh- we should have won the All-Ireland really that year, in my opinion. But, but still, we haven't been competitive since that time. That's a long time. That's nearly 10 years. And Cork football needs to be back up there. And I think Keith will be the man to bring us back to that era. But we'll have to see you now. We'll, we'll have to see how this team develops. But I'd be confident if we get a qualifier run, of course, with the squad we have at their disposal, we could make a good run to the quarter or semi-finals. I might be biased, but at the same time, I'm pretty optimistic. Yeah, like, a, like a, it's, it's a good problem to have in many ways compared with some other counties because I think other counties are probably looking for players and they're looking for options and they're trying to extend their panel. Whereas Cork, they have the players there and they have the options there. It's just about putting all the pieces of the jigsaw together. So it is a good problem for, for Keith Ricken and, and Cork to have. And yeah, getting to a semi-final, I think would would it would be some achievement if they could do it because you know if they were to go through the qualifiers, they'd come up against one of the provincial winners. And I, I couldn't quite see Cork at this moment in time beating any of those provincial winners, but we'll have to obviously wait and see when when that time comes around. But in terms of some general predictions, like just looking at Division One of the league, first of all, who would you have there maybe to to go all the way and, and potentially, I suppose, drop down and get and get relegated at the same time. I would say, as, as usual as ever, Kerry will win the league. I think they'll put all their eggs in the basket. Jacko will be hungry for success, and I think they'll win the league yet again this year. I think Mayo will play them in the final, but Killian O'Connor is coming back. Oshie Mullins a huge boost for Mayo, coming back into that team. And arguably, they're one of the best 15s in Ireland. And I suppose with Dublin as well, if it, um, I suppose there is the argument with Dublin, they have good young players coming through, which is correct. But at the same time, they're losing Cluxton, McCaffrey, Mannion. That's three huge losses already. And even against Mayo in the semi-final, I know Comerford's a very good goalkeeper, but he doesn't necessarily have the calmness that Cluxton would have. Like even looking at the last few minutes, Cluxton would have um, kicked the ball straight into the 45 or kicked it out of play. So it wouldn't go out for a 45 ball for Mayo. But even Comerford and the defenders just kept passing around the back, around the back. It ended up in the 45 and Robbie Henley kicked it over the bar. So, look, I, I think they will improve Dublin, but I don't think they'll win the other just yet. And I think it'll be a transitional phase. Pat Kovic burn though, looks a very good player. I see him in the Sigurdsson Cup for UCD against UCC recently, and he was colossal in the middle of that field. And I suppose your half-back line potentially could be Lee Gannon, Dan O'Brien, John Small. That's that's no half-back, half-back line to be sniffed at, really. Um, as for relegation, I think Kildare, because not necessarily, I think Kildare have a very good backroom team coming in, Paul Galvin, Johnny Doyle, Dermot Orley, etc. But I just think the sides above them are just a bit, a step above, if you know what I mean. I think they might go back to Division 2, regain um, some confidence and go back up again and maybe stay there, but just not this year, in my opinion. The other team might be a shock to all of you. I think Donegal, I think their time in Division 1 could come to an end this year. They're relying on the likes of McBreer, see Murphy over the last few years, and they're getting on a bit now. And the question with Donegal, like, is the mentality there? 
if if you know what I mean. Like they've since Declan Bonner has come in, I think they've got maybe worse each year. Like they've won Ulster Championships two years in a row. They got to the final in 2020, lost to Cavan, and they got to the semi final last year and really didn't really put up a chance to throw on towards the end. So I think the wheels are going to come off at Donegal and I think they'll go down. So I think Kerry will win it and I think Donegal and Kildare will get relegated, unfortunately. Yeah, an interesting one with Donegal. Like it, I think they, in my opinion, they still have enough quality there to stave off relegation but they are probably coming into to 2022 with a lot of pressure and there's definitely going to be a, a lot of eyes on on Declan Bonner and, and maybe it's a case that they probably don't have a an adequate replacement really there to, to replace them with but we'll see what happens in regards to that in terms of uh, like lower down the divisions could you see any surprise packages or, or anything like that or maybe any teams maybe potentially catching the eye and, and causing a shock or two maybe in, in division three or four I think a team in Division 4 that could get promotion above Tipperary, who have lost a lot of players, by the way, is Wexford. I've seen them, like, at the start of last year, they lost to the likes of Watford and Carlo, and you would have thought, where the hell is Wexford football going, really? But then they beat Sligo, they beat Wicklow, who are Division 3, of course, and then they put up a very good challenge against Dublin, and added to that, the Shell Belier success in the Leinster Championship, they have good young players coming through, and I think Wexford could be a surprise package and go up to Division 3 finally. And Wexford football needs to be up at the top, of course. All Ireland semi finalists in 2008. I think they will go up with Cavan, to be honest. Like, if Cavan go, don't go up this year, it's actually a disgrace because you look at Cavan's talent in the team and you have to question what is Mickey Graham at if they don't get up to Division 3 this season because their talent compared to the rest of Division 4 is ridiculous. They still have the likes of. I think Thomas Galligan, Raymond Galligan, Paul Faulkner, like that's still some talent in that team. The bulk of that also championship winning team, of course. In regards to Division 3, I think Westmead, like they were very unlucky in Division 2 last year. They actually have very good performance against Cork, very good performance against Mayo and Mead as well. And they still went down. I think they're way too good for Division 3 and will go up to Division 2. The other team, I think Mickey Hart might lead Lowe's to Division 2, back to back promotions. I think. Loud look good. Samuel Roy at full forwards is a very good forward, and he would get at most Division One teams if he was born there. Of course, I think he's a phenomenal player. Um, Limerick, I would have predicted would would have been dark horses for Division Three previously, but they've lost Danny Neville, who looked their most attacking threat against Cork. Tommy Childs as well. Brian Fanning at full back. Three huge losses already in that Limerick team. I'm not sure why they left, to be honest, because Billy Lee's doing an outstanding job, but. Still three big losses, but yeah, I think they'd be the surprise factors. Mainly Wexford, watch out for them because they look a good team. And, and as well as that, before I finish, Sligo as well, uh, Pat Spillane coming into that team. That should be very interesting. I'd be very interested to see how Sligo developed there. And uh, McEntee in charge as well, experienced coach. So watch out for Sligo's Leitrim. So there could be a good few surprise factors, but my one would probably be Wexford after their performance last year against Dublin a lot of positivity in Wexford finally after the last few years yeah and, and looking at the overall big picture then of the the All Ireland obviously a bit away yet yeah, but it is creeping up on us like week in week out like um looking at the overall All Ireland big picture then like do you think maybe Kerry could get over the line there do you think maybe Dublin could win back the Sam Maguire could be coming back to the capital maybe maybe going up north or maybe finally Mayo's here what, what do you reckon wouldn't it be great if it was Mayo here? Absolutely. <laughs> but um maybe for you, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> um maybe for the rest of the country, not for you. Um, yeah. but, um I suppose I, I don't know about Mayo. I really don't know. Like um there's still the course hanging over them. There's the question mark, will they win the All Ireland? I don't think even with Oshie Mullen being confirmed to be there this year, I'm not so sure. I say Kerry don't have enough in the last few years, but I'm saying at least Kerry will win the All Ireland. I, I'm, I'm, Jesus, it's reluctant for me to say this now, but Kerry, they look a very, very good side, and they have the final piece of the jigsaw now, in my opinion. Stefano Cumber, who looks a very, very good player. Dylan Casey from Aston Sachs as well. They've Shane Murphy from Doctor Crow, so I'm hearing good things about as well in goal. So, yeah, I think it's going to the kingdom for. The first time since 2014, we never thought we'd say that. It's like a famine in Kerry at this stage. But yeah, I, I think Kerry will have enough. I think Toronto will be a long road in Ulster. Mayo, you question the bottle of the team. And Dublin, I don't think I don't think they're quite there just yet. As I said, it's kind of a transitional period for you guys. 
Okofi Bourne could be a good player, but the loss of Cluxton and McCaffrey especially are huge, absolutely huge. So I think it's going to be the Kingdoms year. I hope, I hope I'm dreadfully wrong now, but no, I, I'd say Kerry will win the All Ireland this year. Much to my disgust. Yeah, I was saying to you off air earlier, like they have all the the pieces of the jigsaw there. Like they, you know, you're kind of if you were to make a, a case in court as to why they wouldn't win the All Ireland, uh, you know, maybe you could look back at, at last year against Tyrone. But even at that, they 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 brought in Paddy Talley as a defensive coach. They brought in a new manager and Jack O'Connor, who's won All Ireland's. They've got players like Dylan Casey who are, are coming through with, with Stacks who will now be involved quicker in the league because obviously Stacks got beaten by Finbar. So like they have all the, the pieces of the puzzle there and you'd be amazed really if they didn't win the All-Ireland in the next couple of years, if not this year. Absolutely, yeah. And as I said, it's an absolute family and Kerry. And I was speaking to Stephen Galloway recently on my podcast and he was saying, Mayo, or, I mean, Kerry didn't really deserve that All-Ireland in 2014. So really, you have to go back to 2009 for the last time, they genuinely deserved an All Ireland. So that's a long time for Kerry. It's a really long time, and it's about time to won the All Ireland because I think there's a lot of people in Kerry though being very impatient. And if Jack O'Connor really has a bad year this year, I think I still think Kerry will win the All Ireland. But there'd be question marks if they have a bad year. A bad year would be not reaching the All Ireland final, which could happen. It could happen. Like as far as I know, I'm not sure about this, but I think the draw would say. Kerry and Dublin will be playing each other in the semi-finals. If that's the case, that could be some game at Crow Park and um, definitely worth going to. But and that, that's where Kerry could fall against the likes of Dublin or against the likes of Tyrone and all other all other fine. They don't particularly have a good record against Ulster sides in general. So yeah, that could be their downfall. But if Kerry don't win the All Ireland this year, at least definitely reach an All Ireland final. There will be questions about Jack O'Connor. What was the point of him coming back? And maybe his um, stay could be cut off after a year. Who knows? But still, I still think Kerry will just have enough. But as I said, there will be question marks if they don't get to an all the final least this year. Yeah, Kerry Dublin and an all Ireland semi-final. It nearly has 2013 vibes maybe with how good of a game that might potentially be with the fact that it'll be, you know, right right dead in, in summer, like in, in June, July. So that would be uh, one cracking hell of a game. If if that is the case, like those two teams are fixed to, to play. Well, those two provinces are fixed to play each other. But obviously with the fact that there's going to be quarterfinals, like we'll see what teams progress and, and certainly a long way away from, from now anyways. But we'll just touch on the, uh, before we touch on the hurlers, we'll just have a look at the, the All-Ireland Club semi-finals briefly because uh, I wanted to get your your thoughts on St. Finbar is obviously having beaten Austin Stacks quite comfortably there a week ago and obviously coming up to the semi-finals and what will be this week coming by the time this recording is released but obviously it's a, it's a further week away for us at the minute but like looking at that performance first of all for, for St. Finbar against Austin Stacks like that was one hell of a, of a performance and I suppose you called it right when you said that they'd win the, the Munster Club Senior Football Championship and uh, they really did blow Austin Sacks away like in that first half. I know Sacks came back in, in the second half and had a very positive third quarter but in the end a, a huge year, year for the Bears so far anyways like first Munster Club Senior Football Championship since 1986. Yeah, absolute superb achievement for the Bears. Lucky enough to be there as well along with the Bears fans and the atmosphere up at Sippin Stadium that day was absolutely unbelievable. I actually expected Austin Sachs to outnumber the Bars in regards to fans, but geez, the Bars fans there came up with their numbers. I'm not sure did they for the county final against Tana Kinsey, but they did for the Munster final. They made up for their lack of support, but I suppose what a win. What a win. And um, I suppose did Stacks take the Bars lightly? Kind of looked like it in the first few minutes, especially like people were saying Stacks were defensively solid, but after 17 seconds, the Bars had a plan. Kick the ball straight into Brian Hayes and then pass on to Killian Morris Murray while a finish. And Austin Sachs, the beauty of it is they didn't get level or they didn't go in front um, in, in the entirety of the game. Like after 17 seconds, they only lasted 17 seconds on par with the Bars, which makes the victory even more deserving. And fair play to the Bars, fair play to like, Ian McGuire, outstanding. Billy Hennessy, I was hearing from a Bars fan and honestly, you know, that he's going to be in the car team now that he's off the hurling team. And you could definitely see why by his performance. He was absolutely superb from centre back. You look at Brian Hayes, as I've said you in this chat already, superb, superb player. 
And yeah, even the subs coming on Michael Shields. Like I was seeing a tweet in 2007, the Bars were actually relegated from the Cork Senior Football Championship. They came back up and um, they didn't win the championship for years. They didn't win until 2018, obviously. So it's a long barren spill. And then to get a day like that at the age of 35, for him especially, it's a brilliant achievement. I know he won an all Ireland in 2010 with Cork, but again for him, it, nothing beats playing for your club and nothing beats excelling for your club. It's it's support for him and well done to all the Bars team. And yeah, it stacks at a good third quarter, in fairness to them. Sean Quilter, very good performance from him. And um, Greg Hoard at midfield, but he had the Bars utterly deserving. And I, I did call it, like a lot of people were saying Stacks would win it. The odds were saying Stacks would win it. But I stuck to my guns. I said the Bars would do it. So just to us, the Cork Football Championship was much better than the Kerry Championship. And it proved that way. And yeah, well done to the Bars. But it'd be brilliant if they won the All-Ireland. I'm not sure will they know. I think Kilku are a different animal. They're a superb side. They're well drilled under Mickey Bourne. But I'd be very interested to see how the Bars perform against Kilku. And even to put up a good performance would be absolutely superb. Because they, as you said, they haven't won a monster since 1986. A long time for the bars, and hopefully, they won't go another 30 years or so without because it's a huge club with a huge proud history. So, well done to the bars, superb achievement, delighted for them. Yeah, is it a case now of bonus territory maybe going into that kill Q game, or is it a case of well, these opportunities don't come around too often? Like, as you said, there in 1986, last time they won the Munster Club Senior Football Championship, when we know the quality that's in Cork and there are going to be teams in there that are going to want to regroup and, and come back stronger next year. And I'm sure teams in Kerry and, and all around the province of Munster will want to come back stronger next year. So is it bonus territory or is this maybe like the perfect opportunity in many ways to potentially go and, and do something magical and, and win a semi-final or potentially win an All-Ireland? I suppose it's a bit of both. I would have probably said bonus territory uh, before you mentioned all that, but even looking at even at the Cork Championship, there'd be a lot of teams going for the Bars next year. Like, for example, the Nemo Rangers finishing the group. So they'll be definitely determined to right the wrongs from this year. Castlehaven, Ballancolly, who I thought were lucky in the Cork Championship, Clannock Hilty, who have a very good young team coming through and run the Bars close, actually. They only lost to them by a point. Like Austin Sachs actually did worse than Clannock Hilty did against the man Ballancolly against Castlehaven. So just shows you the quality of the Cork Football Championship but yeah Kilku are just like they are an absolute animal of a team and they'll have vengeance on their minds as well like arguably they should have won that fight against uh, Corfin a few years ago so they'd want to win that All-Ireland and of course Kilbico Crokes they'd want to win the All-Ireland it's a long time since they won it and Power Pierce has done right off them either I've seen them in the Connacht final against not more some superb players there well drilled Pat Flanagan's a very good coach and even look at Kid McCode without Paul Mannion, they look they made um a nice team that were many people's dark horses look very ordinary. And that was a very hard thing to do. So it should be interesting what happens in the club championship. But yeah, having said that, I think the bars need to take this opportunity with both hands, really, considering I think the Cork Championship's no gimme next year. Like there'll be a lot of teams going for them, even a few like Clonbell commercials will be going back in Tipperary, a lot more Castelloni, maybe. The Neuer, or maybe in Kerry, if let's just say Dr. Crokes had a bad year, they might be gunning for success. Keir Zorahalis might count themselves unlucky if David Ward was injured before the Kerry final, of course. So there'd be a lot of teams gunning for the Bars next year, or gunning for that Munster title. So maybe it's a case of the Bars need to take this opportunity with both hands, but they'll be looking forward to the challenge, definitely. Like, they will be the majority of this team would have experienced an All Ireland run like this. So Go out and enjoy it. Go out and enjoy it and um, play to your best against Kilku and uh, make the club pro, really. Like, Kilku are the favourites. There's no pressure whatsoever on you. And may the best team win, really. I think Kilku will have enough, but don't worry off the bars, pierces, or kill the coach quite yet. Yeah, and, and looking at Kilku, I mean, that was some performance against um, Derry Gonley Harps. I mean, the way they brushed Derry Gonley Harps aside like really in that first half and I know Derry Gonley certainly didn't have their their best day by by any stretch of the imagination but from a Kilku point of view like the the only kind of worry I had with Kilku going into 2022 was that it was two years ago that they reached the All-Ireland Club Final and a lot of time has passed since then maybe they might not have the same 
appetite or maybe you know players might be injured or there might be changes in the team but fair play they've come back and they've looked even better they've looked even stronger and um you know they're, they're a serious serious force at the minute and when you look at some of the teams they've beaten already this year as well in down and beating Waddy Graham's Glen and I mean, the performance against Derry Gonley was exceptional. So you'd have to probably look at them as, as not just the favourites for this game against Bars, but also probably for the All Ireland. You have to definitely like um, as I said, they have, would have vengeance in their minds after that Corfin game and to beat Watty Graham's Glen the way they did as well. Superb achievement. And even Scott's tone in the quarterfinals, that was a brilliant win for them. So they faced some very good, or did they play Scottstone? Or it was Wally Graham's game that played Scottstone, excuse me, and they played Rammer United, of course. Um, yeah, but, but since they brush aside the likes of Rammer United, who were decent sides on their day, Derry Gondley Harps, who beat Con Aaron, of course, and Dramore from Tyrone as well. So there, there were no pushovers, clearly. So, you know, they've beaten some good sides in front of them, and the bars would be a stepping stone for their All Ireland. But as I said, There'll be no pressure on the bars. There'll be no pressure on Padraig Pierce's either against Kilmacud. I think Kilmacud will go in as favourites in that game. But again, for the three sides under Kilku, there'll be no pressure. They'll go for the All-Irelands with no one expected them to win. And that'll be the beauty of it. There'll be a lot of pressure on Kilku. So maybe there's a bit of vulnerability there. But I would still back Kilku to win the All-Ireland. They look a seasoned outfit. The Johnstons, the Brannigans, Look, very good players. Of course, Paul Devlin there as well. Superb outfit. At the beat, Derry Gondley, the way they did. Some superb team there. And yeah, I think Kilku will eventually win the All-Iron. But I hope the Bars will win it. I really hope they win it because the players deserve so much. But yeah, I think the Bars, Padre Pierce will be happy enough with their club, their provincial title. And maybe Kilmacud would would as well. But the difference is Kil- Kilku are going for more. They're going for this all Ireland because they've won Ulster in the previous um, championship, so they were used to it before. I think they'll go gun, all guns blazing for this All-Ireland, so I still back Kilku, but there's no pressure on the other sides at all. Yeah, and touching on Pierce's and, and Kilmacud Croaks briefly, like, I mean, big game for, for both those sides, and you've seen Pierce's, I mean, manoeuvre their way through Connacht and, and maybe in some ways quite controversial fashion, obviously, in their win over Mount Belly and Moylock, but a very calm, assured, and, and measured performance really against Knockmore to, to come through that game and, and really showed their steel and, and metal in the team. And, and as you said, with Kilmacud Croaks, who don't have Paul Mannion now for the rest of the, the club season because he's out injured, but like with a lot of teams you see, you know, down the years, you've seen even with Clare a little bit last year in the league when they didn't have Tony Kelly, like, and you've seen even with Ballier coming through Clare when they didn't have Tony Kelly. Like, sometimes when you don't have your your best player, it allows other players to step up and, and maybe you need to change the way you play a little bit or, you know, change the system a little bit. And we've seen a lot of teams that have been able to make it work. So, I mean, that's going to be a fascinating game as well. Like, who would you be fancying to come through there? Should be very fascinating. And you mentioned players stepping up for Kilbacook Crooks. Tom Fox was definitely one against Nace that stepped up. And there was a few others, Shane Cunningham as well, throughout the campaign. So they, there is definitely players coming up through the ranks. And um, as for Padre Pierce's, I think they definitely deserve the kind of title. Billy Moynock. Look, I, I this argument made for another day, but briefly, the way they, they treated Jerome Henry at the end of that game was a disgrace. And rightly so, the players will be punished for that incident. No matter what the score is, you just don't punch the referee. I think it's absolutely ridiculous what they did at the end of that game. But fair play to Padre Pierce's. They got away from that drama. They won the kind of title and fair play to them. They were exceptional really against not more. It's going to be a tight game. I think Padre Pierce's might just have enough because I think Kilbacode will miss Mannion. It's doing this one game is enough free league against Nace, but to do it twice, and Padre Pierce's will have their main players, of course, in Hubert Darcy, the Dailies, and she, and uh, your man Carey, number 15 for them, was superb against not more superb performance. I'm not sure why he was not talked about in Ross Common circles before the Connick final, but still he looks a, like a very, very good player coming through the ranks. So I think it'll be a Padre Pierce's coup final just about, but Kilbert Code will give it a good rattle, I'm sure. Yeah, I'd probably agree with you as well. Actually, I have a funny feeling Padraig Pierce's might just have a little bit more and 
in the team there to find a way through. Like they seem to be great at finding ways to, to win games, but at the same time, Kilmer because experience already having come through the Leinster Championship and having played some some big games already will be uh, will make it quite interesting. You'd be back in Kilku to, to win the All Ireland from here, anyways. Yeah, definitely. Like uh, the vengeance is there, the players are there, the managers there, of course, and Mickey Moran. I think Padraig Pierce will make it tough for them because Pat Flanagan is equally as an experienced manager as Mickey Moran. When you see he, him doing some good work with Offaly, Sligo and Westmead. So, look, I, I think Kilku will win it, but I think it'll be closer than people think. I think Padraig Pierce will definitely put up to them. And Crow Park might suit Padraig Pierce because it's a wide pitch to play their expansive football and they might put on a show in Crow Park, but it could go the other way as well. Kilku will just suck the life out of them like they did against Derry Gondley Harps and like they did against Rammer United as well and it could be a whitewash but I'm confident Padraig Pierce could put up a challenge but at the same time Kilku will win it in my opinion